Welcome to Hartman Math. Uh, before we get to today's lesson, I'm going to have you work on a couple warm-up problems. Uh, these are from Math 2 and Math 3, Solving Quadratic Equations. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can solve the equations. All right, let's take a look at number one. Uh, a good strategy here would be to solve by factoring. Uh, factoring a quadratic trinomial into a pair of binomials. So it does factor into x plus 5 and x plus 1 as factors in no particular order. As a check, x times x is x squared, x times 1 is 1x, 5 times x is 5x, added together makes the 6x and 5 times 1 makes the positive 5, so the factoring is correct. Then we would use the zero product property to split it into two equations, x plus 5 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0, and if we solve both of those, that step's not shown, but if we solve both of those, x equals negative 5 or x equals negative 1, the order is not important. We could also try factoring for number two, but it just doesn't factor under normal processes. So uh, another strategy, obviously there is the quadratic formula, but in this case, because it is one x squared as uh, at the start and an even uh, coefficient of the x, which is our b value, um, completing the square is our best bet. So we want to move the constant to the other side, so subtract for both sides, then come up with the completing the square number to add to both sides. So we're going to divide the b by 2, so we get positive 3, and then square that, and we get positive 9. We're going to add 9 to both sides. At that point, this becomes a perfect square trinomial, so we can write it as the binomial squared parentheses x plus, and then what did we square to get the 9? It was a positive 3, so that'll go next to the x. Simplifying here, we get 5. Uh, then just becomes a square root method problem. Square root both sides. Do not forget the plus or minus. And then to get x by itself, subtract 3. It can be done uh, either in front or behind. I prefer in front so that we don't think that it has anything to do with the 5 since this is square root 5. So you're going to typically find that I'll write it here in front. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root of 5. We do get two answers to that one as well. So our lesson today is on the graphs of equations. Our first thing we're going to look at is given any kind of an equation, does a point fit that equation? Is it on the graph of that function? In this case, this is just a line. But what we're going to do, and this are two separate problems, is just try 1 comma 3, x coordinate, y coordinate. So we're going to start by just doing substitution. So uh, it says write the original equation. This comes out of the book. Obviously, it's not something we necessarily have to do. If we're doing it as a homework problem, you just do that anyways. Uh, but then we're going to substitute in. So we're going to replace x with 1 and y with 3. See if this makes a true equation. So if we evaluate. The left side is 3, the right side is 3, so check there. Uh, it does lie on the graph. 1 comma 3 does lie on the graph of that equation. Right, part B, we'll check that one as well. So write the original equation. Substitute for x, substitute for y. Since 8 times negative 2 minus 5 is not 4, in fact, it's negative 21, notice a little slash through and says it does not equal, that means that our point is not a solution to that equation. So now let's get into uh, graphing uh, functions or equations. And one method that we have, which we kind of always start, even new, uh, new functions before we get to shortcuts, is the point plotting method. So isolate one of the variables. Typically, it's y that you want to get isolated. Make a table of values, plot the points, see if you can kind of figure out what's going on. 
So if we have y equals 2 minus x squared, y has already been isolated, so we're ready to go for our table of values. If we really don't know, we typically want to pick some negatives and some positives. Uh, this is what they're going with. I just kind of tend to usually go with these five, but we'll th throw three in there as well and see what happens. So we're going to substitute in negative two for the first one for the x there. So negative two squared is positive four. Two minus four is negative two. And we can go through the rest of them. So notice when we get the x and the y, that becomes an ordered pair. We plot the point. So we'll do the same, plug in a negative one. See what you come up with. Should be two minus one, so you should get positive one. So negative one comma positive one. Substituting zero, that's a good one usually, easy. So two minus zero squared is just two minus zero. That's just two. So we get zero comma two. Uh, substituting in a one, 2 minus 1 squared, that's also 1, so 1 comma 1. Substituting in 2, 2 minus 2 squared is negative 2. So the point, if we tried 3, we would get 2 minus uh, 9, so negative 7. That doesn't really fit on the graph, so this is good enough. We see that it is the parabola shape that fits through. Uh, it continues left, it continues right. We do want to put arrows on the graph to show that it's going to keep going. As we can see, it's going to go towards the, and pass through 3 comma negative 7, even though that, that does not appear on the graph. So just a quick dis uh, description of and discussion of intercepts of the graph. You can see some different uh, examples shown. Intercepts are where we either cross x or a y-axis. Notice this one is going to cross just the y-axis, so it does not have any x-intercepts. It has one y-intercept. Uh, this one here have, hits the x-axis in three spots and the y-axis at one, and so on. We've got this circle here. It doesn't have any intercepts. So intercepts, we want to write them as ordered pairs. So if it's an x-intercept, a comma zero, maybe that's a five comma zero in parentheses, and a y-intercept would look like this, parentheses 0, comma, the b value, whatever that is here. So the technique defining the intercepts, we're not looking at a graph, but looking at the equation, to find an x-intercept, uh, this one, have the y-coordinate be 0, solve for x. And we just flip it around if we want to find the y-intercept, which is generally the easier one, uh, have the x be 0, and solve for y. So a little example on there, we've got an equation y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6, and we want to find the x and y intercepts. So if we're going to go after the x-intercept first, remember that it just showed we would want to replace the y-coordinate with 0. So 0 equals x squared plus 5x plus 6, and solve by some strategy. So back in math two, we learned well, probably the first way we want to look at in this case, um, as it does have the uh, x term, let's try factoring. And, and I do think this one factors, so we can use the parentheses, two sets of parentheses for the binomials, x in front of each for x squared. We need to come up with numbers that uh, multiply and give you six. And when we do check the outside and inside, we would get the five x. So I think that would be an x plus 3 and an x plus 2 in no particular order. Uh, just as a check, x times x is x squared. 2x plus 3x makes the 5x, and 3 times 2 does make the positive 6. So if we then take those, the factors are going to lead to the x-intercepts. If we set this equal to 0 and solve, x plus 3 equals 0, solve for x. x plus 2 equals 0, solve for x. You would get negative 3 here, make it a point, negative 3 comma 0, negative 2 here, negative 2 comma 0. Y-intercept, go back to the original equation, substitute 0 for all of the x's. 
So zero squared plus five times zero plus six disappears. Zero plus zero plus six makes six. So that means y equals six and therefore the y-intercept listed as a point is zero comma six. So checkpoint, uh, here's our equation. Go ahead and pause the video at this time and find the x and y intercepts. So if we set the uh, y coordinate equal to zero, uh, this is a difference of squares factoring pattern, x plus three, x minus three, so that does lead to x-intercepts of negative 3 comma 0, positive 3 comma 0, as we set those equal to 0, and solve. And then substituting in 0 for the x, we would get a y-intercept of 0 comma negative 9. Okay, just a quick look at the symmetry that uh, some of the graphs may or may not have. Uh, starting with x-axis symmetry, if your equation creates something where there's a mirror image, if it were to be reflected across the x-axis, that has x-axis symmetry. Probably the two more important ones that we're going to see and use a bit more are y-axis symmetry. So something possibly like a fairly standard parabola, if we flipped points across the y-axis, if uh, it's a mirror image and that would have y-axis symmetry, and then points, our origin symmetry is a type of point symmetry. If we spin or rotate halfway around 180 degrees around the origin, kind of spinning the graph like this, if it looks exactly the same, it would have point symmetry about the origin. That's going to lead to other different uh, things about the graphs that we'll discuss later. Um, the graphical test, we just I've kind of already talked uh, through uh, on the last slide. All right, our next topic is kind of equations of circles, which comes from the distance formula that we were looking at yesterday. So instead of d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 and so on, here's going to be our x1 or our point 1, and here's going to be our point 2. So the center of the circle is going to be given the coordinates h comma k. So essentially we would be doing the distance formula x2 minus x1 in parentheses squared plus y2 minus y1 it would equal the distance. Well in this case the distance is the radius of the circle so that's why we're using r to denote that. So that's kind of our equation of the circle. The start that comes from the distance formula uh, and then if we square both sides, we actually get the equation of a circle, which is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. That's the standard form equation for a circle. So given a point lies on the circle and where the center is, we need to be able to write the standard form equation of the circle. So we're going to use the formula. First thing is we're going to need to find the radius. So radius comes from that first part or the distance formula. And the radius is uh, the x coordinate, which is right there, minus h, which is the x coordinate of the center. So negative 1 minus negative 2 squared plus 3 minus negative 4 squared. So this becomes positive 1 squared. This becomes positive 7 squared. So we get 1 plus 49. And we get the square root of 50. If we were asking what is the radius, we would want to simplify that. But in terms of using it in the equation of the circle, we're fine as is. Because the equation of the circle is going to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. We're going to need to square that. So here's our equation. 
We're going to substitute in the H, the K, and the R. If we simplify that, we're just simplifying here. We're not going to do the squaring. Simplify here, not do the squaring. Here we're going to do the squaring. And the square root of 50 squared is 50, and that's the equation of that circle with those characteristics. And here's a checkpoint on that. It's a little bit different, so pay attention because it's saying the endpoints of the diameter. This might bring in some of the stuff that we were talking about yesterday. So if those are the endpoints of the diameter, write the standard uh, form equation of the circle. Go ahead and pause the video now and go ahead and see if you can work that out. So notice this one doesn't include the center, and that's a pretty important part of our equation. Well, if the endpoints are on the diameter, then the center has to be the midpoint, halfway between those endpoints, the midpoint. So it takes us back to the midpoint formula from yesterday, where we would average the two x coordinates and average the two y coordinates. So that would be our start. That's going to find our center at negative 2 comma 1. To find the radius, pick either one of these two points. I chose the first one and say, what's the distance between the point on the circle and the center? If we work that through, you get the radius as the square root of 34. And now we can use h and the k and the r and plug it into the equation of the circle. So our final answer, x plus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 34. And that's it for today.